نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we will start our discussion with verse 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسَنًا وَأَقِيمُوا السَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّقَاةَ سُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْقُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ مُعْرِزُونَ Allah says, And recall when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, enjoining upon them, Do not worship Allah, and to parents do good, and to relatives, orphans, and the needy, and speak to people good words, and establish prayer, and give zakah. Then you turned away, except a few of you, and you were refusing. Our detailed discussion of verse 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah still continues. Now in the start of today's session, uh, let's revise and repeat the first five out of the ten commandments given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. The first was La Ta'buduna illallah, the right of Allah, worship none, obey none other than Allah. The second, Wabil Walidaini Ihsana, be kind and merciful to your parents. The third, and be kind and merciful to whom? Zil Qurba, your relatives. And the fourth and the fifth commandment, which we discussed in the last session, Wal Yatama Wal Masakin, the orphans and the deprived, the poor categories of the society. Now, today I shall be talking about the next three, that is the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth commandment out of the Ten Commandments. The sixth is Qulu linnasi husna. Qulu means say, talk, converse. Say what? Say words of kindness. Talk how? Politely. So the command is about good manners, about polite behavior. With whom? Linnasi. With all the mankind. That is, be kind, be polite, and be good mannered to all those around you. May they be your parents or in laws, your spouse or your children, your siblings, your relatives, your friends or your neighbors. May they be Muslims or non Muslims. They may be rich or poor educated, literate or illiterate, may it be your boss or your subordinates. So irrespective of the caste, the creed, the color, the social status, your relationship, and this is the sixth commandment. So this verse here is ordering politeness of manners, courteous behavior, speaking politely, Speaking good words to all people around us. And because we, the followers of Prophet ﷺ, for him, his manners 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands in Quran, Inna qala ala khuluqin azweem. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is absolutely no doubt that you have been raised to the highest rank of best manners. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and how was asked that how were the manners of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like? And she was surprised and in surprise she asked, haven't you read the Quran? Haven't you gone through the message of Quran? And then she said, Qana Quran. That the manners, the manners of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were the model of Quran. And what the Quran says for us, this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Himself has said, Inna qala ala khuluqin azim. And his wife has commented, Kana Kana Quran. Allah orders us all, Laqad kana lukum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasanatun. That for sure, the model of excellence of Prophet Wasallam is the actual role model for you. Allah help us adopt all that. Help us follow all that. And help us adopt all that good manners. For which Prophet Wasallam said, I was sent for the completion of good manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all perfect and complete our manners also. How important good manners are. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar Razi Allah ta'ala anhu, he reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu said, Inna min khayarikum ahsanakum akhlaqan. That the best of you are those who possess the best of manners. How important manners are. Prophet ﷺ is laboring the best people of the Ummah, not as those who worship Allah, who offer Salah, who fast in the month of Ramazan and who perform Hajj with perfection and precision as the best of the people of Ummah. But the best people of Ummah are those who possess the best of manners. Little do we realize the importance of good manners. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Abu Da'ud that Prophet sallallahu said Akmalul mu'minina Akmal means the perfect the perfect, the best Akmalul mu'minina imanan ahsanuhum khuluqan the believers who possess the best morals are the most perfect in faith so the best and the most perfect of believers are those who have what? Who have the best morals, who have the best manners, who are most polite and who are most refined and who are most courteous. Hazrat Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Abu Dawood. <coughs> that Prophet sallallahu said, Inna afqala shayyun that there is no doubt that the most heavy of things, the most weighty of items, yuzwa'u fil mizan, which will be placed in the scale of deeds. Al mu'minu yawm al qiyamati khuluqun husunan. Prophet said that on the day of resurrection, the most weighty item. The most weighty of deeds in the scale of deeds will be what? Will be good manners. I will again repeat. Little do we remember, little do we realize, little do we care about the importance of manners and politeness and courtesy in our lives. Then in another Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu It is reported that a person came from the tribe of Muzana and he asked Prophet Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, ma khayru ma urti al insan. That Messenger of Allah, of the things that people are bestowed, 
what is the best prophet sallam said he said qala al khuluqul hasanu good manners allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us realize how important manners are so i would stop here to make us all realize and to rub it in that there is a definite relationship between belief and manners he who has perfect manners definitely has who has a perfect belief anybody who has a perfect belief will surely inshallah will have very good manners and similarly he who possesses very good manners is a perfect believer allahumma ja'alna minhum allah make us one of them similarly hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she reported in abu daud that she heard the messenger of allah say sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said innal mu'mina there is no doubt that a believer la yudriku bi husni khuluqihi that a believer who has good manners and who has good moral disposition darajatan his standard his reward his grades will be as what qaimi layli wa saimi nahari was will be like what will be like the person who spend his nights in prayer and he observes fasts during the days always so we can all gather from here just let me ask you is it possible for any person to prostrate or to stand the whole night in prayers is it possible humanly possible for a person to spend the whole night in prayers and then to fast the next day and continue this routine continuously and go on fasting every day and go on worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praying the whole nights all nights is it humanly possible no it's not but a person a believer who spends the day with good manners courteously politely with good manners will get the reward of a person who is continuously fasting and who is who is praying throughout the night so you see that a person who is a true muslim and he has belief and he then possesses good manners although he does not engage himself in the supererogatory fasts and the prayers he will attain the same degree of excellence through his moral goodness as the one who generally stands up in prayer throughout the night and fasts all the day long Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us remember and relate to the importance of good manners in the life of all of us and all the believers. Hazrat Maaz radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Mauta that he says that when I was I was leaving Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sending me and had appointed me as the governor of Yemen. and when he was bidding him farewell in medina he gave him many instructions and the last advice which prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave hazrat muaz bin jabal when he was leaving for the responsibility of the governor of yemen he said what that the last advice given to me by the messenger of allah when i had put my foot in the stirrups of the mount was that he said make your manners good for the people that is behave with them with good manners so this this is the importance this is how important it is to be careful and to be mindful and to be sensitive about the perfection of our manners has it imam malik has reported in mauta and hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in mustad ahmad that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said boristu that i was sent down 
I was chosen for prophethood and I was sent down. Why? Li utimma husnal akhlaq. So that I evolve and I complete the moral virtues to the highest perfection. So Prophet Salaam said what? I repeat that I have been sent down by Allah to evolve the moral virtues to the highest perfection. So the purpose of the prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to teach the Ummah, to teach each one of us how to behave courteously, politely, with good manners and with good moral virtues. The words of the Prophet Sallallahu here tells us that the moral reforms and the development of good morals were among the chief objects of the mission of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said inna that there is absolutely no doubt inna min ahabbikum ilayya that the nearest and the dearest to me ahabbikum ilayya ahsanakum akhlaka that the nearest and dearest to me among you you here does not just refer to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, but you here refers to all the, all the believers of the Ummah, to all of us. So this is what Prophet ﷺ is telling each one of us, that the nearest and the dearest to the Prophet ﷺ are those who have the best manners. And similarly, similar words in Amin, Ahabbi ilayya ahsanakum akhlaqan the dearest to me and the nearest to me on the day of resurrection will be those who behaved with the best manners that is who had good manners in their life and Prophet also said that the most disliked the most disliked and the most rejected among you in my eyes are those who have bad manners. So this all shows us how essential good manners and desirable morals are for gaining the affection of Prophet and gaining his, his love, his nearness and his closeness on the day of resurrection. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she reports in Musnad Ahmad that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to make a supplication and the supplication was for acquiring good manners and this was when a person stands in front of the mirror and looks at his own reflection so this was the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ when standing in front of a mirror and looking his, at his reflection. He used to say, Allahumma ahsanta khalki fa ahsin khuluki. That to Allah, you have by thy grace made my body good. That you, you are the creator, you are the ahsan al khalikin. You are the best of creator, but you, my creator, you have made my whole body, my whole creation in the best form. And please, I pray to you, I supplicate to you, for ahsin khuluki, I make request to you that make my morals good as well. So this is a beautiful supplication of the Prophet Wasallam, And this teaches us many lessons and gives, gives us many messages because the first thing is that we need to realize and we need to accept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us our body our being our structure our face beautifully and in the best form rather than cribbing and grumbling and bickering and bothering about our bodily structures and about our our appearance, I wish I had long silky hair, I don't like this curly hair. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me in the best form. I wish I had blue or green eyes 
And I don't like the shape of my nose or my forehead. I don't like my complexion. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have made me in the best and the perfect form. We accept and we confess. And this is gratitude to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has physically and bodily blessed us with. And the second and the most important message which we gather from this supplication, the words of this supplication are that the facial and the physical beauty is Allah's blessing and we need to remember it and we need to be grateful for it and we need to have gratitude for it but we need to remember that all this physical and facial beauty is just a blessing of Allah it is none of our achievements it is none of our achievements so we we, we need not be proud or arrogant we need not boast about around it we need not look down other people because of it. We need not make fun of other people because of their bodily appearance, of their facial appearance. We just need to be humble and we just need to be grateful. But we need to most of all remember that this beauty has been blessed to us by Allah. And it is none of our achievements and performances. But what we achieve is actually our manners so rather than being worried about and rather than being concerned about our physical and facial appearance and beauty we need to be bothered and concerned and worried and to work up for the beauty of our manners the goodness of our manners so the lesson learned is that rather rather being only concerned about the wrinkles or the spots on my face, I need to be conscious. <coughs> I need to be conscious, more conscious about the blemishes of bad manners or foul language in my, in my personality or my character. Rather than trying to beautify myself and rather than trying to conceal my facial spots or rather than trying to work up and spend all my time and money and energy on my clothes and dresses which would make me look pretty, prettier and prettiest, I need to work harder and struggle and strive harder to improve my manners, to work up, to improve my ethics. And Prophet ﷺ has also taught us a supplication for improving and for acquiring good manners. He has taught us to say and pray, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min munkirat al-akhlaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek refuge from you from the evil of bad manners. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min munkirat al-akhlaq wal-a'mal wal-ahwa'i wal-adwa. So we need to remember these words of supplication and we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the words of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inshallah it will be granted and we need to work harder and we need to be even more sensitive about how our mannerism and how our politeness and courteousness is improving or not now the next two commandments the seventh and the eighth commandment is the foundations and the pillars of Islam here are mentioned as the seventh and the eighth commandment. After the rights of our fellow beings in the first, the last five orders, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again explaining his own rights the seventh and the eighth commandments and these are what these are the basic fundamentals and the pillars of islam as has been reported 
by Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Buni al-Islam ala khamsin shahadatan an la ilaha illallah wa shahadatan Muhammad rasulullah wa aqimu salati wa atu zakati wa sami ramazan wa al-hajj al-bayt that the foundations of Islam, our religion, are on five things. Number one, belief and faith in the oneness of Allah. Belief and faith in the prophethood. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah in the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seal of prophets. And establishing the prayers and paying the zakat and fasting in the month of Ramazan and performing the hajj. So after belief in the oneness of Allah, the next two fundamentals of Islam and the seventh and eighth commandments to Musa alayhi salam, they are Akimu Salata and Atu Zakata. How important they are that together, they are both together, Akimu Salata and Atu Zakata, together they are mentioned 70 times in Quran. And I would repeat here, what I mentioned just in the first lesson of Surah Al-Baqarah, that whenever in Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about salah, Allah does not order about offering salah. Allah always says, Akimu salata, establish salah. Nowhere ever does Allah says or orders the bondsmen and the believers to offer salah, but we are always continuously, repeatedly, 700 times in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to establish salah. I would briefly repeat and revise what I've already mentioned in the start of Surah Al Baqarah, what establishing salah is about. It is adopting the complete system the complete style, the total training and the timetable of Salah in our life, completely and perfectly. What is it? Waiting for Salah. Adjusting our routine and daily timetables according to the Salah timetable. It will not be the Salah timetable which will be adjusted according to our timetable. No. So waiting for Salah, waiting for the Azan, answering the Azan, and then after answering the azan, reciting the sunnah supplications after azan, performing the ablation meticulously according to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, wearing the explained and the ordered obligatory dress code for salah, selecting a clean, quiet, peaceful environment, and then offering salah with complete method of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ with full concentration and focus. As if full concentration, like Prophet ﷺ said, Man Ahsan, what is Ahsan? That you offer salah as if you were seeing Allah. And if you cannot acquire or attain this degree, then at least offer salah as if Allah is seeing you. You are being washed, you are being observed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator. And then after the salah is complete, establishing, establishing salah means what? Fulfilling all the promises. All the, all the promises, all the covenants we we'll make during salah. And we sit and we make covenant with Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Allah subhanahu wa taala, we will we will be the announcers that we believe in Allah. Our behavior, our mannerism, our dress codes, our business, our politics, our life codes, our our marriages, our deaths, our births, they will all show that we are the believers of Prophet Sallallahu and Allah. So these are the covenants. Establishing Salah is fulfilling all these promises and covenants which we make with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in our Salah. And establishing Salah is to stick to the dress code of Salah in the rest of our life for the rest of the day. And not just to adopt this dress code only during offering Salah. 
establishing salah is to carry on what salah has taught us salah teaches us punctuality discipline cleanliness purity humbleness equality brotherhood unity and much more so maintaining all this in our lives is actually establishing salah maintaining the obedience we are demonstrating while prostrating while bowing down in front of allah we are just acting and behaving as the as the obedient servants of allah in salah so we need to behave and we need to maintain this method of obedience in the rest of our lives and not only this not only this is establishing salah establishing salah would demand from us working for the salah of all those who are under our influence and under our control to work out to establish their salah also so allah six seventh and the eighth commandment is to establish the salah and give zakah now what we can gather from here is that salah and zakah are obligatory in the teachings of quran and the teachings of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but not only this they were also obligatory in the teachings of all the prophets from hazrat adam alaihi salam to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because salah and zakah are the basic orders and the fundamentals and they were made obligatory by all the prophets and all the messengers of allah another important thing which i would here want to highlight that if you see the order of commandments in these 10 commandments the arrangement of these orders is also very important to be noted because it it teaches us as the preferences and priorities in our lives now after the first basic right of allah the first order was obviously he is our creator he is our sustainer he is our master he is our ruler so the first right is his right but after his first right and belief of the oneness of allah comes in sequence in order the next five commandments are what not the rights of allah they are the rights of the fellow beings even before salah and even before zakat allah mentions the rights of the parents the relations of kin the orphans and the masakin even more important than the pillars of islam are the rights of the fellow beings and then in all these rights of fellow beings being kind to them being helpful to them being merciful to them and then what qulu lil nasi husna allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about manners before salah before zakah and does not mention about sami ramazan and hajjul bait but allah mentions about the right of the fellow beings and the and the importance of good manners with these fellow beings remember remember on the day of judgment allah almighty may forgive his rights but he will not forgive the rights of the fellow beings until and unless the person whose right was not was not given he pardons the person himself prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting in his companions and he asked you know who will be the faqir the beggar of my umma who will be the beggar of my umma on the day of judgment the companion said allah and his prophet they know better than us and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then explained himself he said that the beggar of my umma on the day of judgment will not be the one who will not have the worldly wealth or the riches or the golds and silver but 
the beggar of my ummah on the day of judgment will be a person who will have worldly riches and gold and silver and wealth in this worldly life but he had failed to pay the rights of some around him he was harsh and hard to some around him he hurt some people around him he ill treated and had bad manners with some people around him he abused he abused some and he called some with bad names so on the day of judgment you know what will happen his good deeds will be given away to all those people whom he had ill treated and when all his good deeds and his virtuous deeds will finish then their sins and their bad deeds will be placed in his scale of deeds allahumma la taj'alna minhum allahumma la taj'alna minhum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all establish salah pay our zakah dutifully and be extremely and highly highly sensitive about the rights of all those around us and be help us be very very careful and mindful and sensitive about our mannerism astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu ilaik rabbana zalamna anfusana wa in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min alqasirin rabbi ighfir wa arham wa anta khairur rahimin allahumma innaka afuwan qarimun tuhibbul affa fa'fu anna fa'fu anna fa'fu anna rabbana la tu'akhizna in nasina aw akhta'na rabbana wa la تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك الرحمه انك انت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين ثم امين